Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Tower Codex and something that is kind of interesting to me, something that has made me wonder if we're not going to see something that I've actually been thinking about and wanting for quite some time. So there's been a little bit of leakage as these as as often happens when it comes to new codex announcements and there have been a couple of images posted on 4chan which were then reposted to Advanced Tower Tactica and one of these images which are both from White Dwarf um, talks about something that could potentially fix one of the issues I have with Tau. It might not fix the other issue but it might fix the one issue. So it talks about the fact that the Tower Empire, in new background stuff, um, have attempted to utilise faster than light technology and that the results were unexpected. And the story of the Tower Empire has progressed since the last edition of the Codex and takes into account the events of the Damocles Gulf Crusade. Now you're probably thinking, well, what difference does that make? One of the things that I've always struggled with in terms of the Tau and have done since they were first created, um, in fact I have their first codex somewhere, I think it's upstairs, um, is that in the grand scheme of things the Tau Empire never felt big enough for me to kind of fully accept that they wouldn't get steamrolled. Because it's not the same as the Necrons. When the Necrons were introduced it was very much a case of, okay there's these Necrons and they're pretty strong and we don't know how many there are, and they could be all over worlds that we've already settled, but just not awake yet. They were not massively numerous, or at least not awake in terms of like huge numbers of them. But there was kind of a failsafe there, and the failsafe essentially was if we don't know how many there are, and we don't know where they are, which kind of means it's very difficult to wipe that race out. Tau, to me, always felt kind of sandwiched in, as though they were put in an area where they were put there because that was the sort of most sensible place but it kind of ignored the fact that comparatively the Tower Empire did not feel big enough it did not feel significant enough and that's because obviously they, they couldn't make the Tower Empire massive the Tower had a ridiculously fast expansion in terms of both uh, like population numbers and technology they went from messing about with sticks and stones to having fully operational battle suits in a ludicrously short amount of time and during this time they were essentially hidden from Imperial sight. I believe it was by a warp storm that basically cut off their area of space in the Damocles Gulf. Um, I could be misremembering that, I've not read that first edition Tower Codex for a long time, not first edition but you know what I mean, it was the first Codex, the first edition of the Tau Codex. That Using edition in 40k and crossing it over with books it gets really messy. I think they were third, weren't they? Introduced in third, I think, at the same time as Necrons. I could be totally wrong. But something that I kind of always struggled with was the fact that the Tau have a an interesting thing in 40k in that they don't seem to be affected by chaos. They don't have that that well, I was gonna say that soul. They don't have that imprint in the warp that a lot of other races do. And Whilst it did mean that the idea of Chaos Tau was kind of funny and not really possible, it also meant that they couldn't actually travel through the warp. They couldn't use warp jumps. They sort of skimmed into the warp and then immediately got ejected back out again. So it was sort of faster than just chugging along, but it was nowhere near as fast as actually dipping into the warp proper, which they couldn't do. Which again, did nothing for me because I looked at it and went, so they've got the small empire, the Imperium could send a few more fleets over there and steamroll them and they wouldn't even be able to get away that well because although they're really fast on the ground and even though they have excellent air support on the ground in space and in, it, in terms of travel time they're losing out like their warships are powerful yeah but they can't really make a run for it all that well because they can't use the warp to get about they are kind of I guess in a way sort of trapped where they are. There's no real easy way for them to expand massively beyond their borders, which is something that I never really liked. If they can actually utilize faster than light travel to the point where they are comparable to the Imperium in terms of their ability to, to get around the place, that would actually be really good. I would really like that. I would find it a lot more, I say believable. I guess I would find it more reasonable than anything else because I would 
it would it would kind of remove those doubts in terms of survivability um, as a race in terms of, as, as an empire um, and it also you know gives the potential for them to expand further and and quicker and they could actually become a a proper power in the 40k universe because that was the other thing that I never really that I never really enjoyed about the Tau. I mean, admittedly, Necrons have kind of... I won't say they've suffered incredible power creep, because that implies that they are ridiculous on the tabletop, but in terms of narrative power, they have things like the World Engine, which is ridiculous. As a concept, as a thing that exists in the 40k universe, the World Engine is obscenely powerful. It is absolutely insanely over the top. It can destroy fleets. I mean, yes, one of them was blown up, but that's not the point. There could be more. There could be loads more. The Tau don't really have anything like that. They don't really have that kind of, oh, it turns out we've actually got the strongest thing ever. They just don't really have that aspect to them that other races have got. They're all about the high tech. They're all about the tactics. And whilst that's great in terms of that's excellent for a ground engagement, in terms of empire versus empire war, I could never really see how the Tau was supposed to survive. If they can travel faster than light and if they can get around, that takes away that that doubt immediately. That makes it much more believable for me. That makes it much more um, reasonable. The only thing that I'm concerned about, and this is something that actually I've been concerned about for a while, is that unlike a lot of people, I actually kind of enjoyed the the kind of young, naive aspect of the Tau as a race. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like that because it's not grim dark enough. You can't have a race that is young and full of hope and for the greater good and so on. To the point now where it would seem that the Tau have kind of been twisted away from that somewhat. It's gone from being the greater good is a declaration of trying to make things better for their race and it's become more of a uh, more of a brainwashing mind control situation. Which I can understand why that's been done. But I actually felt that the Tau produced a really good contrast because Warhammer 40,000, whilst it is a fantastic universe, and if I didn't like it, I wouldn't make videos on it every goddamn day, um, it's not the most subtle, <laughs> I think it's fair to say. It can be, but overall, as a as a setting, it, it has sort of one speed, and that is charging the enemy line's speed. And the Tau, I actually felt, produced quite a nice contrast. Because this was a race that was prepared to... Admittedly, yes, they would subdue other races. Other races were not treated 100% equally. They were under the Tau in terms of the hierarchy of power. But they still allowed other races to live. They still allowed other races to exist. They incorporate them into their empire. They found uses for them. They found jobs for them. They, they actually looked at the existence of other races instead of saying only we have the right to be here you need to die they said okay how do we use these to our advantage and how do we make it so that their continued existence is of benefit to both them and us that is a kind of refreshing attitude in the grand scheme of 40k even if you take the view of the brainwashing mind control side of things that's still i would say a step up from the imperium's approach of drowning them in the bodies of imperial guard until there's no one left it provided a nice counterpoint a nice a nice contrast on the one hand this race is awful that race is awful that race exists purely to fight things and gets bigger when they fight stuff that's how that's just how they are this race is going to eat your entire planet and then all the planets next to it. And then we have the Tau. Yeah, there's something a little bit off there. Maybe they're not as, as pure and as naive as they look. But in terms of attitudes, it was kind of refreshing. What I would kind of hope is that it's still not made 100% clear because this is the worry that I have in terms of a new codex for the town. On the one hand, I, I see a positive change in terms of in terms of their story, in terms of their um, ability as an empire to survive in the universe. I also can easily see a negative change where it goes from being 
an unspoken and suspected, heavily hinted at thing of being. You know, they are not the. Uh, they are not the race that it was first believed they are. They are not that naive. They are not that young. They are in fact under the control of someone else, or at least they are under control of their ruling caste, the Ethereals. I would kind of hope that that's not outright stated, although it has got dangerously close several times at this point. What I really don't want is for the Tau to just be the Imperium 2.0, because the Imperium is enough Imperium without there being a second one. The Tau is a good balance, for me personally anyway, and to lose that I think would be a bit of a shame. In terms of actual gameplay, in terms of on the tabletop, um, the Tau Index from what I've been told, I, I, I don't have a Tau on myself, it's not been great, <laughs> it's not been ideal, um, I would hope that the major issues that seem to be affecting that index are, are fixed in the Codex. From a personal note, I'd kind of like to see more support for things like Crew and Vespids again. Back when Tau first arrived, Crew and Crew were all over the place. Crew were actually a good option to take, I seem to remember, although we are going back a good 15 years at this point. Um, I just never see them anymore. I can't remember the last time I saw an, a Tau army on any on any site that didn't that had crew. It's just battle suits for days, or a bunch of breaches and devilfish. I just all drones, drones for apps for miles, a hundred drones or more. But crew don't seem to get a look in. Again, I think that's a shame because one of the things that makes Tau unique and makes them interesting in Warhammer 40k is their willingness to use other races to their advantage and to incorporate them into their empire. It provides a very a very good narrative device and it also provides a bit of variation in terms of when you see armies that are on display. I mean, power armor is great and there's a load of different variations of power armor, but at the end of the day it all looks like power armor. Having, having an army that is so varied as to having you know, floating tanks, mech suits, infantry, and clearly alien infantry, or at least I say clearly alien, infantry that is not the same in terms of race as the other units in the army. That's a kind of unique selling point for the Tau that seems to have been lost a little bit. So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to seeing the Codex. I'm hoping that there are changes in there that fix my personal issues. I mean, this is nothing, I'm not suggesting that everyone has the same problem with the towel that I do. Uh, that would be ridiculous. But those are my personal feelings on some of the aspects of them. I'd kind of like to see their uh, their inclusion of other races made a bit more a bit more obvious, made a bit more useful. And anything that allows them to travel faster than light and gives them that option of being able to expand and progress further and quicker, I would absolutely be in favour of because it would make more sense to me that they would exist as an empire with that ability than continuing to exist as an empire without it. Question is, are you looking forward to the Tower Codex? Are you looking forward to any of that stuff? Is the general survivability of the Tower something that has never sat well with you as well or has it just been one of those things where you just haven't thought about it or alternatively you just don't see the problem at all be interested to hear what you think because i don't know how many people have that problem could be loads could be none we'll find out in the meantime thank you very much for watching there's a multiple array of things for you to click video subscribe patreon on the screen in front of you all of that crap click if you like don't click if you don't want to and uh, i will see you for the next video toodaloo